Hi everyone, welcome to another Gaffering Gear. Very quick review today. We're having a look at this light, which is the Golden Eagle LED 5000. So this is a 500 watt COB with power supply built in and battery operation available. So here's the point of difference between this and other lights I've reviewed. This thing is gonna sell for around 900 to 1000 US dollars. So extremely cheap for the firepower. All right, so let's start off with how much it costs and what you get for your money. So it comes in a very basic bag. The other two things you get is the power cable and the instruction manual. That's it, no dish. All right, so let's go through operating this unit. So you've got your on off switch at the back, then the unit turns on, takes a little bit of time to boot up. You've got three modes of operation, which are the top button here. So your first mode is your normal operating mode where you've got a dimming range from zero to 100%. The next mode is your silent mode which drops a light to 40% output, but reduces the fan noise. And then the third mode is your battery mode, which limits you to 60% brightness. Now there are a few issues with the battery mode. Number one is the on off switch doesn't work when you're running in battery mode. Now the main thing that concerns me with running this thing off batteries, you can change it into the normal operating mode and then pump the brightness up to 100%. Now this probably won't destroy your batteries. Your batteries should be smart enough to turn off, but it could leave you sitting in the dark. The next thing on the back is the effects modes. Now, I'm not even gonna bother showing you the effects. The processing in this unit is really slow and it just can't pull them off. Now, I suspect there's been some lazy programming here as well. I honestly think they've taken the menu system from another light and just chucked it into this one because you've got special effects like cop car, which you can't do on a monocolored light. Also in the menu system, you've got things like DMX channel selector. This unit doesn't have DMX. So I suspect they've just taken the menu system and cut and pasted it into this light. All right, so let's go through the pros and cons, starting with the pros first. So if you don't like messing around with cables, you're gonna love this unit because the power supply is built in. You only need to plug in your AC power. The next pro for me is you get a lot of firepower for your money. We'll talk about brightness later on in the video. The next pro is the color render. It's actually superb and not just for the price. As to is the white point accuracy, very surprising for what you're spending. Now I've tried filming at 24 thousandth of a second shutters and I can't get any flicker, so it's also flicker free. Right, let's get into the cons and no doubt you've heard the first one. The fans are very loud. We've got two fans, one for the power supply and one for the LED, both quite loud. And the next con for me is there are some limitations into what you can mount onto the front. Now it is a bow and S mount, but not everything mounts and not everything works well. So let's take a look at what works and what doesn't. Now in terms of things like your bow and mount soft boxes and lanterns, this thing works fine with those. It can flood those out, no problem at all. But you're gonna have major problems with dishes. So here's the problem. The LED array on this is sitting very close to the locking collar. So when you put a dish on, the LEDs are sitting here in the locking collar. They're not sitting forwards here where they're picking up all the reflector. So let's take a look. So as you can see, the LEDs are very recessed. So it's not gonna light up the reflector in this section. It's only gonna catch the section out here. So what does that mean? Well, it means that regardless of what um, brand of reflector you put on, you're gonna get a hotspot. Next, I tried Fresnel's, and the Forza Fresnel just didn't fit on the mount. I then tried the Aperture F10, and that did fit, but the stirrup can only just take the weight. Because the LEDs are positioned further back, you can't get a very even beam, and there's some odd color hue happening. One side is slightly green, and the other side is slightly magenta. And it's no good for barn door cutting. This is the finest barn door cut that I could actually do. I then tried the aperture projection mount, and much to my surprise, this worked okay. But if you're thinking about doing gobo projections, it's very concaved, and the blacks are milky. I then tried the Nanlite projector, and for once, the Nanlite projector wasn't front heavy. This actually worked surprisingly good. I got very clean beam edges, I got very clean cuts, and I even got good gobo projections. 
Even with focusing and defocusing the gobos, there was minimal color fringing. This projection mount actually seems to perform a little bit better than it does with a Forza light on the back. However, at this point on the projector, it gets really hot really quick. Way hotter than it does with a Forza 500. All right, so before we get into all the technical data I've collected, one thing to mention, it does have a phone app, so you can download that off a QR code that's in the instruction manual. And it's one of those uh, generic sort of phone apps that um, a lot of manufacturers use. And you can also use it for things around your house, like your smart globes, your automatic dog feeder, things like that. All right, it's not an amazing phone app, but it actually does work and it does enough, it's a mono light. All right, so let's start going through some of the data I've collected. Let's start off with power draw. So when I test my lights, I'm running them through a meter that automatically records things for me. So the maximum uh, power draw that was recorded over the three days that I was testing the light was 503.3 watt. Now, uh, other things I can check, the power factor unity uh, running at full power, it comes in at 0 0.99, which is actually surprisingly good uh, for any light. Um, and at 10%, that drops to 0.88. That's better than a lot of light. So uh, if you're running it off generators, portable generators, uh, you want to have uh, a power factor score of, of plus uh, 0.95. And this is coming in at 0.99. So you're fine there. All right, let's uh, talk about brightness. So with no modifier on, at a distance of one meter at full power, I got 19,900 lux. And at a distance of three meters, I got 2,400 lux. Now in the battery mode, running at 60% brightness, at one meter, I got 10,900 lux. And at three meters, I got 1,520 lux. Now, just to give you a couple of other stats, if you're looking to use it with the projectors, with the aperture projector, I got 12,100 lux at three meters. That's with a 36 degree barrel on. And with a Nanlite projector with its 19 degree barrel, I got 17,300 lux. All right, let's have a look at the photometrics on this thing. I've taken three sets of readings, one at 100% brightness, one at 50% brightness, and one at 10% brightness. So at 100% brightness, I got 5,952 Kelvin with an SSI score of 74. The TM30 color vector score is a respectable 94 with an average 102% saturation. Here are the CRI scores and only R12 is below 90. And here is the spectral distribution. And it has a nice white point with a delta UV of plus 0 0.0005. At 50% brightness, it comes in at 5,916 Kelvin with an SSI score of 73. The TM30 color vector score is 94. And with the CRI, again, only R12 is below 90. And here is the spectral distribution. And the Delta UV came in at plus 0.0011, which means it's got a little bit greener, but nothing to worry about. And at 10%, it is still surprisingly accurate. 5,922 Kelvin. The SSI score is 72. The TM30 is still a respectable 94. And with the CRI scores, only R12 is below 90. And the white point is really accurate with a delta UV of plus 0.0004. All right, so that's another gear review done. The next review should be on the DMG dash. I just didn't have enough time to collect all the data on it. I'm still testing it. And then after that, it should be the Nanlux Evoke and then the SGC tubes. All right, take care everyone, see you later.